Assalamu alaikum students, hope you all are fine. Uh, I am your teacher Dr. Mohamed Habib Amin. In this video, we are going to study about heart. Uh, at first, we will learn uh, morphological structure of heart, position of heart, location of heart and then we will move toward the structure, internal structure of heart. So, without wasting any time, let's start. So students, uh, at first we are going to start from the basic of heart. Heart is a muscular pumping organ which is made up of cardiac muscle. Heart is uh, the central organ of our circulatory system. So uh, heart is a muscular organ uh, having a specialized type of muscle which we known as uh, which we call as the cardiac muscles. So uh, in Greek, heart is called as cardia and in Latin, heart is termed as coronum. So, in many places of heart, in many places in the structure of heart, you will hear the word uh, as related as cardia, cardiac or coronary, coronum. So, these term is referring uh, heart uh, in different languages. Uh, so, the study of heart, uh, the study of a structural uh, and functional study of heart is called uh, cardiology. So, but whenever we are going to study about the dysfunctioning uh, disorder of heart uh, related to heart and its uh, blood vessels, uh, that study would become as angiology. Now, uh, let's first study about the morphological character and its location of heart. The location of heart, heart is present in our thoracic cavity. Our whole body cavity is divided into two regions. The upper one where ribs are present. Uh, that region is called thoracic cavity and the other cavity uh, where the ribs are absent uh, which is actually separated by a muscular wall called diaphragm, the abdominal cavity. So the heart is present in our thoracic cavity at ventral side. The side in front is called ventral side. That side is ventral side and the back side is called dorsal side. Now, uh, what's the vertebral position of heart? As you know that initially vertebra is divided into three regions. Cervical region uh, which consists on seven bones C1 to C7. Thoracic region uh, which is the largest division of vertebra consists on 12 bones T1 to T12. And uh, the lumbar region which consists on five bones uh, L1 to L5. And there are two terminating bones as well cossex and sacrum. So the heart is present in T2 to T5. Uh, the vertebra, uh, the vertebral position of heart is uh, T2 to T5 and it is present at the region is called as mediastinum. Mediastinum is the region uh, which is, uh, is the region between two lungs. The region between two lungs is called mediastinum. Now, uh, it, uh, the heart is slightly tilted towards the left side, but uh, why the heart is tilted toward the left side? As we know that uh, the heart is consists on, the heart is actually divided into two parts, the left heart and the right heart. The left heart uh, deals with uh, oxygenated blood while the right heart deals with deoxygenated blood. Uh, the left heart receives blood from lungs and supply blood throughout the body and the right heart receives blood from all over the body and supplies it to the lungs. So, uh, left heart has to be very strong at the, uh, as it has to pump the blood throughout the body. So, due to, the, uh, due to this uh, character, due to this character, due to this feature, the left side of heart, the, uh, the chamber of heart which has to pump uh, the blood throughout the body is very thick and strong which we call as left ventricle. So during embryonic period when our heart is at developing stage the left uh, ventricle has to be very strong has to be high mass part so the heart is tilted toward the left side as, a, as, if, we, uh, as if we take a wing balance and put uh, some uh, weight to left side that uh, balance is must have to be tilted to the side where we put more weight. In the same way, when our heart was developing in our embryonic life, 
so the left ventricle was strong and was uh, heavy weighted so heart as uh, has been tilted towards the left side but there are some exception as well there are some people whose heart is tilted toward the right side uh, so those people whose heart is at uh, the right side uh, actually have in the mirror image of normal person these persons are called dextrocardia so uh, let's first discuss about the uh, heart so the heart is present in between two lungs and uh, as it is tilted toward the left side there is a depression in the left lung uh, for heart that depression uh, in lungs uh, where the heart is present is called cardiac notch and the region between two lungs is called mediastinum so uh, at first uh, heart is surrounded by a layer which uh, protect the heart uh, that layer we call it pericardium pericardium is basically the external covering of heart so here i have drawn the diagram of pericardium uh, let's suppose this red colored part is our heart actually the pericardium is divided into two parts uh, what are these two parts number one fibrous pericardium fibrous pericardium and the second one is serous pericardium serous pericardium fibrous pericardium so uh, let's look at the diagram this black part which is uh, i have shown the outermost layer is called fibrous pericardium fibrous pericardium the word fibrous is representing that uh, the tissue by which this pericardium is made up of has contains some protein fibers which we call as collagen fiber so uh, as uh, the fibrous pericardium contain collagen fiber and some mass of elastin fiber as well so uh, this fibrous pericardium put some limit on the heart and it protect the heart from over stretching as normal the uh, heart uh, do not uh, stretch much but when we do some vigorous exercise the heart may uh, the cardiac activity may increase the, and the heart can be stretched so uh, the fibrous pericardium protect the heart from over stretching now uh, inside the fibrous pericardium uh, there is a serous pericardium the word serous is representing this layer is filled with fluid so uh, the serous pericardium consists on two parts uh, the inner one which is called as visceral pericardium uh, the inner part, uh, the inner part of serous pericardia, which we call as visceral pericardia, is attached to the layer of heart, and the ex uh, and the other part, uh, which is attached to the fibrous pericardia, is called as parietal pericardia. Parietal pericardia. and there is a space in between these two pericardia which is called as pericardial cavity or pericardial space pericardial space this cavity or this space is filled by some fluid and that fluid is called pericardial fluid this fluid is called pericardial fluid so the serous pericardial contain fluid and this lubricates the heart and prevent the heart from friction and any kind of destruction so when the heart is contract uh, this layer is compressed and stretch with the contraction of heart with the movement of heart while the fibrous pericardium is a stuff layer which uh, put some limit on heart that uh, restrict the heart from over stretching now 
that's the function of pericardium and that's the pericardium now let's move towards the layer of heart so uh, as i have shown the pericardium uh, as a broad diagram over here and this diagram uh, in which I, I have tried to show the layer of wall of heart so this black part uh, i have represented is pericardium because uh, here uh, in this diagram I have to teach you about uh, layer of heart so I don't need uh, to elaborate pericardium to this diagram so the heart is consists on three layers the heart is consists on three layer the outer layer which is attached to the pericardium is called epicardium epicardium Uh, this epicardium is actually a serous layer uh, which is consists on uh, serous tissue or a connective tissue having some elastin fibers uh, so that the heart can stretch and compress easily not compress actually contract easily and the middle one and the middle layer is called myo cardium as the name indicates that the myo means muscle this myocardial layer consists on cardiac muscles consists on cardiac muscle which is actually respond uh, which is actually responsible for the normal functioning of heart for the contractile function of heart and this cardiac muscles is made up of a specialized cell called as cardio mean heart myo mean muscle and sites mean cells cardio myo sites and the inner layer and the innermost layer is called endocardium endocardium and this endocardium is made up of squamous epithelium which is made up of a squamous epithelium uh, having a very smooth surface because that's the lumen of heart where uh, the blood is coming blood has to fill to this cavity so this epicardium this epicardium is uh, connected with blood so it uh, must have to be very smooth so uh, uh, to protect uh, to prevent any kind of friction so uh, this is all about layers of heart and uh, external layer of heart which is called as pericardium now let's move toward the uh, structure and uh, parts of heart thank you hi students so in this video we are going to learn about the structure of heart so uh, i have drawn two diagrams over here the one is showing external structure and the other is showing internal structure of heart so uh, let's start from this diagram as you know that the heart uh, the human heart uh, has consist on uh, four different chambers uh, two upper atria and two lower ventricles the atria is uh, actually a thin wall chamber because it has to receive the blood and just uh, pump the blood to the ventricle while the ventricle is thick wall chamber because the uh, ventricle has to receive the blood from atria and pump it to the body so ventricle must have to exert more force to generate more force uh, ventricle is more muscular and more thick part now uh, we divide heart into two regions the left heart and right heart or we may say that the oxygenated part of heart and deoxygenated part of heart as i said uh, left side of heart always deals with the oxygenated blood while the right side of heart always deal with deoxygenated blood so in this uh, diagram i have shown you the, the structure of heart upper part of heart so here is the right atria which receives blood from the throughout the body so the body part the extremities which are present below the heart is received by inferior vena cava vena cava is actually the largest vein of heart 
so it uh, it has two parts inferior and superior the inferior vena cava uh, carry the blood to the uh, right ventricle from lower extremities of the body while the superior vena cava carries the blood of the upper extremities of the body to the heart there is another opening there is another atria there is another uh, sorry uh, another vein which takes the blood to the right atria we call them cardiac vein the cardiac vein carries the deoxygenated blood of the heart as you know that the heart is supplying the blood uh, throughout the body so heart needs energy heart needs nutrition to supply nutrition to supply energy to supply oxygen heart has another uh, has uh, their own blood supply so when uh, when the blood uh, is supplied to the muscle of heart and to the heart so it uh, must have to be returned to the heart as well so that oxygenation and deoxygenation must be carried out to the heart so the deoxygenated blood from heart uh, is uh, collect at right atria by cardiac means so the right atria collects uh, blood from three regions from the lower extremities of the body by inferior vena cava from the upper extremities of the body by superior vena cava and from the heart by cardiac artery cardiac vein so uh, uh, when the right atria receive the blood uh, and it uh, transfers the blood to the right ventricle so the right ventricle uh, and right atria uh, right uh, atria uh, there is a there is a groove like a structure present in between atria and ventricle like this let's suppose this one is atria and this one is ventricle so there is a groove we call them atrioventricular sulcus sulcus is actually the groove or invaginated part but we can't see the sulcus over here because that sulcus is covered by fat that sulcus is covered by fat that green region uh, that uh, the region that the part which i have shown uh, from the green color is actually the fatty layer of heart uh, and that supply of heart as well so uh, the right ventricle the right ventricle receive the blood uh, from right atria and supply the blood to the lungs so that this deoxygenated blood uh, convert to oxygenated blood so when the, the the gases exchange occur in the lungs that oxygenated blood supply to the heart again by uh, pulmonary vein to the left side of atria as you know the right from the right ventricle the pulmonary artery takes the blood to the lungs and this artery pulmonary artery is the only artery which carry deoxygenated blood while all the other arteries of the heart carry uh, of the other arteries of the body carry uh, oxygenated blood this is the only uh, this is the exception which uh, which carry deoxygenated blood and from the heart the pulmonary vein takes the blood to the left atria and that's the only vein in the body that carry oxygenated blood so uh, in the left atria there are two pairs of uh, artery one from the left side and one from the uh, right side there are two pairs of vein which is opening to the left atria uh, as you know the, we have two lungs left lungs and right lung the uh, left lung <coughs> from the left lung the blood is carried to the uh, pair of vein which is coming to from the left side and from the right uh, lung the the pair of vein uh, taking the blood to the uh, eight, uh, left atria from the left side right side so uh, when the atria receive blood from the lungs uh, when the left atria receive blood from the lungs it transfer that blood to the left ventricle and from the left ventricle the largest artery is arise that is aorta which takes the blood throughout the heart so left side of heart is completely separated from the right side of heart as in this diagram i have shown you the the, the oxygenated part by red color and deoxygenated by by uh, right uh, blue color so 
uh, actually uh, there is a wall present between uh, left side of heart and right side of heart we call them septum so the wall in uh, which is present in between left ventricle and uh, right ventricle is called interventricular septum and the wall which is present between right atria and left atria is called inter atrial septum so inter atrial septum between two atria and interventricular septum between two ventricle so now uh, let's suppose if i cut this uh, heart longitudinally like this way and uh, and just discard the front part so uh, uh, we will see this type of diagram so in this type of diagram we can uh, easily we can easily visualize the internal structure of heart so let's start from the left side as i said the left side receive oxygenated blood from the lungs the left atria receive oxygenated blood from the lungs uh, from two pairs of uh, pulmonary vein one from left side and one from right side so as the as this atria receive uh, deox uh, oxygenated blood from the uh lungs by, by pulmonary vein it pumps the uh, it pumps that blood to the uh left ventricle and between left atria and left ventricle there is a valve this valve we call uh, them bicuspid valve actually this these valves which are formed uh by endocardium 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 that let's suppose this one is endocardium the endocardium gets folded like that that's full like that and uh, it form the valve so this valve contain a uh, double layer of endocardia and inside that double and inside that doubling of uh, endocardium there is a connective tissue so uh, uh in between left atria and left ventricle there is a valve present we call them bicuspid valve we also call them mitral valve what does it mean by bicus bicuspid because bicuspid uh, it has two flaps one and left and right flaps uh, when uh, the atria push the blood to the ventricle these flaps get open and when ventricle has to pump the blood to the aorta these flap must have to be closed so there should be no backward flow of blood from ventricle to atria now uh, and from vent from left ventricle the blood is supplied to the aorta the aorta is the largest artery of the body and between aorta and ventricle there is another valve which is uh, actually some uh, somehow like a half moon uh we call them semi lunar valve this valve is arterio ventricular valve arterio means artery and ventricular means ventricle arterio ventricular and the bicuspid valve which is present between atria and ventricle left atria and left ventricle uh this is called atrio ventricular valve so do, don't get confused ever if you uh, hear that word atrio ventricular and arterio ventricular arterio ventricular uh, valve is representing the semi lunar valve which is present in between artery and ventricle and atrio ventricular valve is representing the bicuspid and tricuspid valve which is present in between atria and ventricle now as uh, ventricle supply the blood to the aorta this aorta consists on three parts uh, here is the is that part where you can see the blood is ascending this is called ascending aorta that's called ascending aorta ascending aorta and you can see the horizontal part of aorta uh, but uh, before discussing that part uh, the one thing that i have must have to say that for, uh, from the ascending aorta there is a pair of artery arising from ascending aorta which supply blood to the muscle of heart that artery is called coronary artery coronary artery arises from ascending aorta and it supply blood to the muscle of heart now let's discuss about uh, transverse aorta transverse aorta and uh, in the transverse aorta you can see the three branches over here the one is uh, going upper right side and the other two is going upper left side so uh that two branches which is going upward left side 
द फर्स्ट वन इज कॉल्ड लेफ्ट कैरेटेड आर्टरी द लेफ्ट कैरेटेड आर्टरी सप्लाई ब्लड टू दी लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ नेक एंड लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ हेड वाइल द लेफ्ट सब क्लेवन आर्टरी सप्लाई दी ब्लड टू दी लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ शोल्डर एंड लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ हैंड लेफ्ट हैंड एंड लेफ्ट शोल्डर वाइल द आर्ट वाइल द ब्रांच विच इज विच इज गोइंग टूवर्ड द अपर राइट साइड इज कॉल्ड ब्रैक्योसिफेलिक आर्टरी दिस ब्रैक्योसिफेलिक आर्टरी कन्वर्ट्स इन टू टू ब्रांचेस एंड दीज ब्रांचेस इज कॉल्ड वन इज कॉल्ड राइट कैरेटेड आर्टरी एंड राइट सब क्लेवन आर्टरी द राइट कैरेटेड आर्टरी टेक्स द ब्लड टू द राइट साइड ऑफ नेक एंड राइट साइड ऑफ हेड वाइल द राइट सब क्लेवन आर्टरी टेक द ब्लड टू द राइट शोल्डर एंड राइट आर्म्स सो uh and there is a there is a another part of aorta which is coming downward that downward aorta is called descending aorta and that take the blood to the lower extremities of the body which is present below the heart now uh as you know the the, the whole body is supplied the blood and now let's discuss about right side of the heart as you know the uh, body use the blood and that blood become uh, deoxygenated and the deoxygenated blood comes to the heart again but this time at right side of the heart the right side of heart uh, the, the first part which receive the blood is called right atria and that right atria have the largest vein which uh, carry the blood of the whole body is called vena cava these vena cava has two opening in inferior vena cava and superior uh, superior vena cava the superior vena cava carries the blood from the upper extremities while the inferior vena cava carries the blood from the lower extremities there is another uh, artery uh, which is called cardiac sorry another vein which is called cardiac vein that take the blood from the heart muscles which is supplied by coronary artery now as the right atria receive the blood it, it pumps the blood to the right ventricle and between the right atria and right ventricle there is another valve we call it tricuspid valve the tricuspid valve is representing that these valve this valve has three flaps 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 uh, one is right uh, cardiac flap uh, right side and the uh, other is uh, left coronary flaps yeah we can say that right coronary cusp right coronary cusp left coronary cusp and this is non coronary cusp non coronary cusp so let's uh, don't talk about this part of uh, valve uh, now uh, when the blood comes to the right ventricle it supply the blood to the lungs there is another artery arise from the right uh, ventricle we call it pulmonary arc we call it pulmonary arc and in between pulmonary arc and ventricle there is another valve we call them arterioventicular valve so this is semi lunar valve or semi circular valve and from the pulmonary arc uh, two arteries arise that takes the blood to the left and right side of lungs uh, left lung and right lungs Uh, we call them pulmonary artery so uh, the last thing is that uh, ventricle and uh, both of the ventricle uh, have some cone like muscles we call them papillary muscles and from these papillary muscles some cords are arise which hold that uh, atrioventricular valve uh, tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve and these cords are called cordi tendini these cords are called cordi tendini and uh, these cords are called cordi tendini these cords make sure when the ventricle contract these bicuspid and tricuspid valves must have to be closed so that uh, the blood from ventricle uh, 